Well, it feels like I haven't sat in front of a camera forever and I actually miss you guys. Now, I've been getting these messages, questions, people asking, sending me screenshots of jobs. The way there are thousands of jobs in Canada and many advertisements, thousands. Some even go to the extent of saying that Canada is desperately looking for people because there are thousands of jobs. Now, in this video, we are going to concentrate and talk about the reality of Canadian jobs. Hi guys, welcome back to Accord TV and if you're new here, my name is Accord and on this channel we talk a lot about immigration and basically everything else. This is where we just vibe on positive vibes only. You are at the right place. Now, without wasting any more time, let's talk about the reality of Canadian jobs. You have probably seen advertisements talking about Canadian jobs, thousands of jobs. Canada is desperate for workers. Millions of jobs are available in Canada. Now, let me tell you this. The truth of the matter is, Canada is not disparate for workers. Now, let me explain myself because now you may be thinking, mm, I quote, we have seen there are thousands of jobs in Canada because there's a lot going on, a lot of talking going on and a lot of WhatsApping happening. If Canada is disparate for employees, why the too many protocols? Because listen to this, if you get a job offer, you are not allowed to just take any job. Not every employer is allowed to give you a job if you are living abroad and you are thinking about immigration. Okay, so number one, you have to make sure that whoever is offering you a job is actually a designated employer. Designated employers are employers who are officially allowed with the Canadian government to give people jobs. And these designated employers, all of them, 99 percent of them must have an LMIA. LMIA is when an organization or a company has permission to offer you a job when you're living abroad or probably when you're living in Canada and they have to go ahead and explain themselves that they could not get someone else, a Canadian or a permanent resident to do that particular job. So they have to prove that. So that's what is called an LMIA. Okay, and in regards to designated employers, I did a video on how you can get a job from a designated employer and specifically how to identify a designated employer and that video, you're going to have to watch it at the end of this video. It will just pop up on the screen. Did I say you have to? No, only if you want to. Maybe you're already conversant in that area. But if you're not sure on how to get a designated employer, then at the end of this video, there's going to be a pop-up. And then all you need to do is just click on it and watch it. All right. Now you have gotten a job offer from a designated employer. That's fine. And your employer has a positive LMIA. The next thing, you have to go sit for the IELTS test, which you must pass. And the test you have to sit for is the general one. Don't go sitting for the academic. Academic IELTS is mostly for all students. So your case, because you're going for a job, that's immigration. So you have to go sit for the general exam, which is not easy. Many a times, people have to take that test for like three, four, five times before they can pass it. Well, others are lucky they do it once, but majority, majority. Guys, if you have ever done IELTS and you only did it once, please comment down below for me. And probably how many times you've done it, you can just comment down below and let me know your experience okay so you will have to sit for the ielts exam okay that will take you like two weeks or three weeks trying to prepare and stressing over this exam and if you're going with your spouse your spouse also will have to take the test you're spending money and both of you have to pass and the score you are required to get for your ielts test will depend on your profession the category of your profession where your profession falls in you are not so there are some professions which require higher ielts results like nurses and then there are some professions which you can survive on a seven overall so that's why i'm always insisting please if you're going to sit for your ielts try as much as you can to just fall on all seven like seven in speaking seven in writing seven in da -da -da, everything seven then that keeps you safe okay then you will go sit for your exams yes you have passed the next thing you're thinking about how much money do you have in the bank because you're not just going to walk into Canada. No, they want to confirm that indeed you have money, enough money that you can use to sustain yourself and your beloved ones once you land into the country. So you must have some substantial amount of money in your account. OK, 
okay and this money you have should have been you know coming into your account you know like every month every month there's an activity happening there all right so how is canada desperate looking for workers okay and these millions of jobs why are they putting so many protocols eh, for one to just complete their process and cross over we are still going on now you're thinking about your finances you have done it your bank statements are in order everything is in place okay you have money and everything and out of this money again you're going to have to buy your air ticket for yourself and your spouse and your children you are still spending money and before you can even get into the flight, you're still thinking, where am I going to live? Am I getting a house before I land into the country? Or where am I going to land? Who is going to receive me? So if you're lucky enough, an employer can organize accommodation for you. But many a times, you'll find yourself living in a motel for maybe a week or two before you start finding a place for you to go and stay. Okay? Leaving aside the place where you're going to stay, you're also thinking about landing rates, which, again, is not cheap. And Canada also wants to know how healthy you are. They will insist to go for medical checkup. If you fail the medical checkup, you are not getting a visa. Okay? So how do you say that this country is desperate when they have to check on your health and they will check even on your relatives? If one of your relatives has, like, some terminal disease or something or some disease, that, again, may affect your immigration. You want to think about insurance you have to get your insurance in advance because <laughs> if you get sick you need to take care of yourself yeah so if you're lucky enough you're in these professions and you have this big job offer and they prepare an insurance for you in advance that uh, yeah will say you are lucky but not many people get to have that it's usually you have a job offer organize yourself on how you are getting here okay so you're factoring in insurance which again is very expensive and the insurance you're talking about it's not just for one person it's for yourself your spouse and your children if you have any hmm? you also want to think about how you're going to apply for your visa before your visa you're thinking of going for biometrics this is money you are just spending you know from the time you get that job offer you're just spending money spending money and still there's no guarantee that you're going to go through the whole process you have to change your wardrobe canada is cold so you have to go shopping for everyone buy enough warm clothes winter clothes or whatever clothes you just have to go shopping and just change your wardrobe you're still spending money and if you cannot afford it you're doomed if you don't have all this money to work through all these processes then it's not going to be easy for you your case will just be declared now and void now tell me coming to think about it again how is canada desperate for workers because if canada is desperate for people to go and work there then the protocols would be made very easy you have a job offer get your flight and go but it's not happening like that you still have to follow protocols and the shortest time it will take you is three months that is normal when the pandemic was not here with us but because of the pandemic you will go through the processes most of the offices are closed by the time you are done processing your work the employer is even tired and they've moved on now you don't even have a job offer anymore talking about canadian jobs let's say we're using common sense these jobs it's so hard to get a job when you're not living in canada i'm not saying it's impossible I'm just saying it's super hard. Chances are like 10% getting a job in Canada when you're still living in your home country. When you are in Canada, that's a different story. But when you're living abroad, it's super hard. Chances are so slim. Canada caters mostly for those who are living in the country when there are jobs advertised job fairs going on all these things happen uh, by the way if you're a teacher and you'd like to teach in canada I have a very special website i'm more than happy to share it with you then you can have yourself registered they normally do recruitment fairs at least after every three months so you get yourself registered and those fairs are normally done on invite only so they will send you an email and then you'll appear for your interview and most of the time the interviews are done so if you're a teacher, number one, comment down below that you're a teacher and that you need the website sent to you. And then I'll advise you on how you can have it. If you get a job when you're living abroad, then consider yourself very lucky. I know of a few individuals who've actually gotten jobs when they're still living in their home country and they have actually managed to relocate to Canada. So it happens. What I'm trying to say here is it's not easy 
I think you'll have to send a thousand applications, like even more than a thousand. But many times, when you send an application, you'll get an interview invite. And then the minute you tell the prospective employer that you're actually living in Uganda or in Kenya or in Nigeria or whatever country you're living in, the next thing you get is like a block. No one talks to you anymore okay so initially they will talk to you they will send you an email they will invite you for an interview like instantly when they see your cv and your cv is in the format of the canadian cv interview offers come flashing like this but the moment they notice that you are not living in canada that story ends and even when you go to indeed.com which is uh, the biggest job website for Canada, many jobs listed there. You'll find the employers indicate that if you are not legally allowed to work in Canada, then you must not apply. And again, allow me to mention this, Canada is a first country and many jobs are actually offered electronically. Meaning if you're looking for a job, you need to go work in Canada, then all jobs are advertised online through their websites, through some advertising or something or something. There are several websites which you can use to apply, okay? Sometimes if you're living in Canada, then you can go into the offices and ask for jobs. But many times, most jobs, you'll just have to apply online and then the employer reaches out to you and they tell you the next thing if they're interested in your skills. And did I mention that when you get a job offer, they will also check on your background when you apply for your visa. They will check on your history. Have you been a good citizen? Have you been paying taxes? Do you have records to confirm that? Do you have a police clearing certificate? If not, you are not going to Canada. So why do we say that this country is desperate for workers? Okay, so like I said in the beginning, Canada is not desperate for people to go work there. Just like any other country, jobs pop up. Jobs are offered and people take up jobs. But indicating that Canada is desperate for workers, there are thousands of jobs, is a bit misleading. That is if you ask me. And again, right now, we are going through a pandemic. No country is spared. Though I had this one country which has not suffered this thing at all, at all. I've forgotten the name. But the whole world is suffering. Companies are closing down. Businesses are closing down. People are losing their jobs. Millions of people are losing their jobs. So where are these thousands of jobs? Canada is not any special. If people are losing jobs in America, thousands are leaving jobs in Japan. Canada is not any special. In fact, what is happening now is the government is actually trying to support businesses and companies so they can sustain their staff. So where are the thousands of jobs? So as much as you're saying that getting a job in Canada when you're living abroad is hard, you cannot say, oh, because a court said getting a job in Canada when you're not living there is not very easy. Then no, I'm not going to make my applications. No. Hey, you need to keep sending those applications. Send them. Send your applications until those employers give up on you. And then one day they'll just wake up and decide and say, please, you have the job come and work for us so you never give up guys you have to keep sending those applications and when you're sending the applications when you're looking for these jobs make sure you use the right channels you don't need anyone to help you look for a job like i've gotten so many messages guys asking me to help them look for a job okay if i say i'll be looking for a job for you guys i'll be lying because again it's very simple what i can do is just give you the information of how you can look for those jobs give you guidance and then you go out of your way huh and look for those jobs okay you don't need anyone to get a job for you because all jobs or not let me not say all most jobs which are available are everywhere on the websites companies are advertising publicly and make use of indeed search make google your friend and look for those jobs please don't stop remember here we are vibing on positive vibes only to find out if an employer is designated all you need to do is just to watch the video which is gonna pop up on the screen and let's meet there